Frame number three, breaking off the man leading 2-0, Terry Hunt from Sheffield. Nothing down. That's three breaks in a row. We've seen not a ball potted. He tried it a little different that time, coming in from an angle too, Tony. When I played Terry in 96 in a semi-final, Jim, I, me I remember Terry was having problems with his break. He started off breaking in the center of the table, and he started moving to the side, backwards and forwards. He's got this thing about his break. He's never really had a powerful break, Terry Hunt. And as you can see, he started moving the cue all about already. Well, on the prescription right now, it would be taken to the doctors. It would read a clearance right here for Neil Blake because you know that his confidence needs a bit of a boost and no better way to get that first frame under your belt I'll tell you what, Jim, did you see his arm shaking yeah, on that shot? Play. Well, he's, he's certainly looking. struggling. You can notice it, yes, Tony, quivering. He's got an awful lot to do, and right now he's got to adjust to the conditions, never mind his opponent. I've seen a lot of nervous plays in my time, Jim, but that is unbelievable. Really, really nervous. Trouble is when you when you're that nervous, he's he's not going to be enjoying the occasion at all. He's going to be frightened to take on the shots that he'd normally play. You know, he starts taking easier ones. He's just trying to get his confidence up, even though they're the wrong shot. Well, he needs a bit of luck, and Mickey, the mascot, has been brought along for just that reason. Well, Mickey looks a bit calmer than Neil, anyway. Well, I always remember, Tony, what uh, the famous Australian snooker player Eddie Charlton once said to me, you don't try and hide the fact that you're nervous and that it's a tense situation. You try and embrace it. As you said, you try and enjoy the situation. And that's what Neil has to try and do. Let himself accept the position he's in. Well, like you say, Jim, World Championships only come around once a year. At the end of the day, you want to enjoy the occasion of being there. And Neil, for me, is just not enjoying it. <coughs> See Terry here, he's got a great chance to make it 3-0. In prime position once again. Cues ever so smoothly, you know. Really is a composed player. <coughs> and she won't see much emotion on the face of Terry Hunt, whether winning or losing. He's got a great match temperament. <coughs> Thing is, Terry's confidence is going to be sky high seeing what Neil Blake's doing. He'll feel that he can't lose the match. I said that at the outset. This really was in his hands. It was his to win or lose. <coughs> Certainly nothing's happened for me to change that theory. Good pot here on the yellow. And slightly overdrew that. A little tougher pot than he would have liked, but again, the position of formality if he gets this yellow. He's making it look all too easy right now. The world number seven do nothing to belie the favoritism of leading Neil Blake three frames to nil. And the last yellow, as I said, no problem for position, just had to concentrate on the pot, and the easiest of blacks would be left. But he's got to be feeling pretty good. Certainly got out of the gate. That was the first order of the day. And by stark contrast, have a look at his opponent. Shoulders slumped. 
and a world of negative thoughts on his mind. He said, precious little to try and build on, and yet that's what Neil has to do. He's got to concentrate on his game, his performance, and completely forget about that 3-0 scoreline. So he breaks off here in frame number four. The Welshman looking to get off the mark. Yeah, it's all right saying to forget about the 3-0 scoreline, but it's displayed on a big board right in front of you. I remember the last time I played. I'm always a few frames behind. You can't help but keep looking at it. Open table for Terry. Choice of reds or yellows. And right now, easier pot certainly looked to be on the yellows. This red must pass. Well, in fact, he had to manufacture the shot. And he's not left himself an easy red to follow. not worked out too well really for Terry there. He's pulled out a good pot but he's kissed the two reds. And you see the red going into the corner pocket. The cubles come down, kiss the two reds and neither of them possible at the moment. He's going to have to move them. Yes, the two reds certainly will have to be developed. And he tried to do it with a double on the red. <clears throat> But now, the situation has certainly digressed for him. But did you notice Terry smiling there, Jim? He's quite happy with the situation, even though he's missed a pot. He's not worried. Well, he's enjoying a 3-0 lead right now, and as yet, his opponent has shown him absolutely nothing to worry him. I'll tell you what, Neil Blake has yet to pot a ball in this match. How's that one? He's had three goes now, and here we are. Tried to pot the yellow, jawed it. Three goes, three misses. Sometimes, when your opponent is struggling, as has been evidenced by Neil Blake, you can tend to get bogged down with yourself and get a little complacent. That's something that Terry Hunt's going to have to guard against. As we see Neil Blake having potted his first color of this match. See, Neil's just going to try and kick these two yellows out into the open. Going to leave nothing for Terry Hunt here. And you see he's got him out. Cuba at the top of the table as well. So Neil Blake should get an opportunity to win this frame. If you look at the situation in the res gym, there's no real easy safety for Terry Hunt. Neil in his fifth year as a professional not a lot known about him, certainly, at this particular stage of an event. Good long red from Terry Hunt. But the problem area is certainly at the bottom. So we again see the values of good cumanship, a nice clean pot. But the two reds on the left hand side of the table are always going to be a problem. Well, 
Here comes Neil Blake's first opportunity. Terry Hunt missing that double with the red by quite a way. You see coming across the table. He's at least four inches away there, Jim. Good chances for Neil. Well, I do feel that he's going to have to take this finish out. If he fails to get this one, he might as well go upstairs to his hotel room, pack his bags and leave. Rather harsh that, Tony. No, I just feel I just feel he needs to get in winner frame. If he misses his finish now, this match is dead because his head will have been gone completely. He will never be able to erase it out of his out of his mind. He still doesn't have the look of a confident player. Looks like he's making the work just a little bit harder in his mind than he should be. You know, when you get spooked like that in a match, it's, uh, you're actually standing there looking at the table and looking at ways that you can mess up. Looks to me that he's playing this so that he wants to leave the yellow over the bottom pocket last. So he's going to want to screw this back for position on the yellow nearest the red. And that'll do his confidence the world of good. One more good yellow and the hard work will have been done. Difficult frames to win, they say, are always the first and the last. And Neil Blake is now looking to complete 50% of that equation. Down goes the eight, and the first one's gone. He trails Terry Hunt by three frames to one, but at least he's out of the gate. Field base Terry Hunt breaks off frame number five in this race to nine quarterfinal clash here against Neil Blake. And as yet, the break has not been a friend for either competitor. <coughs> Try to control it with a lot of power. We've seen him break a lot harder than that in the past. You find the biggest splits from the break is when players use their whole body weight, they actually pull the body back and throw it forward with the cue, and that's when you get a powerful split. But as you saw with Terry's break there, he just uses his right arm just to send the cue through and split the balls. It's not a powerful break. Well, he's got one awkward red in the center of the table, and he's having a look at planting it onto the other red bottom left. Big shot at an early stage in this the fifth frame. It's there. And all of a sudden, Neil Blake in with a golden opportunity here. If he can keep pulling shots like this out, he's going to forge himself a few openings. What's more is with the amount of Welsh people that have made the trek over here to Blackpool. If he can get a little vocal support going. It's going to put him in good stead. Another good positional shot. Tony, he doesn't look like the same player that started this match. Isn't it amazing how fortunes change? He's got that one frame on the board, and he's a different player altogether, Jim. This is more like the Neil Blake that I've seen in the past, anyway. And you can see 
the black available right center bottom left so he's going to need some angle on this red and that looks perfect he wants to bring the cue ball back the right hand side of the table for the black to the bottom left uh, could have stood with just a little more pace but you'd still have to expect him to get this and we'll know whether or not it's in before him Well, you can't let Terry Hunt have chances like that. That was a chance that I know he's going to remember. If it ends up being costly, this one will be burned firmly into his memory banks. And that's what you call applying the screws. You might have to take a slash at this one and try and fluke it. <coughs> if he hits it absolutely perfect, he can double it into the bottom right corner as we look. out into the open well once again you can see Terry Hunt he's taking no chances he's developing the situation even though he's allowing Neil Blake a visit to the table he knows that Neil has to take a slash at the eight ball try and fluke it and with each visit his position improves See Neil there, he's sizing up the black into the center. Well, he's looking to see if it goes in the center pocket. I don't believe it does. The only chance he's got here is in the top left-hand corner. He went for the center. But look, the chance he's left Terry Hunt. Cannons of black up the table. Missed the middle of the bag by quite, quite some way, really, there, Jim. Well, Terry still with limitless options. This is like shelling peas for Terry Hunt. Can't miss him. And there's the old commentator's curse. But look, just look how lucky Terry's been there. He snooked him. That's unbelievable. As he can count himself very lucky there. The smile certainly shows it. And if he ever does extract the foul here, and with it, two visits, I think he'll be racking the balls for the next frame. Oh, and there it is. And now Terry Hunt with two visits. Well, it remains to be seen whether he'll need the second one. Yeah, you got to feel sorry for Neil Blake there. He can count himself very unlucky. But he did have a chance earlier in the frame. You know, it was his first, and he choked it away. Just a little careless positional play under the final eight ball. Ended up proving his undoing. The much fancied Terry Hunt. Well, he is going to need the second visit. I think he's relaxing a bit too much, Jim. Just position to the black. Well, he's a little closer than he wanted to be, I'm sure. But he's still on the black. And this for a 4-1 lead. I think you might need the rest for this one, Jim. It's a fair way up the table. 
Time yes, she's got the rest out. <laughs> the scoreline confirmed. The block disappears. It's 4 1 to Terry Hunt. And he's re established a three frame advantage over Neil Blake. And Neil Blake breaks off here, frame number six of a scheduled 17. Not a very good split of the balls there. Open table. And a very messy looking table for colors here, yellows or reds. And a look of worry on Neil Blake's face. And why not? Oh, we've got an expert sat just beside me. I wonder which color he would pick here. Well, it happens to be the reds, Jim. They're slightly better position than the yellows. But it's really, it's a bit of a messy frame, this one. I don't think there'll be any uh, eight ball finishes from here. Good pot that one from Terry. Not ideally positioned onto his next red though. Just feathered this into the pocket and didn't negotiate the cannon onto the yellow. There's our referee from France, Christophe Castagnier, the first international referee for a major event here. Yellow balls to play. So very similar to Neil Blake. We've got two newcomers to the televised stages here for international competition. Terry. As you can see, the red ball will pass the yellow at the bottom left hand of the table. Great shot from Terry Hunt. See Terry Hunt there. Class shot from one of the best professionals in the game. one of Terry Hunt's worst shots from one of the best professionals in the game it can happen to anyone take heart all you amateurs there at home this game is not near as easy as a lot of these players make it look and I thought it was only me that played shots like that Jim not sure he wanted to pot that one I think he was trying to cover the pocket it would put them in a very, very strong position there. Yes, another look at it at some stage. He may have to try and do that. Because he's got an awkward yellow that doesn't pass. That's the one nearest the two reds, bottom right of your picture. He'd be very happy with that shot. A smattering of applause. But he's developed that yellow very nicely over the center pocket. He has shown us flares of what brought him to this quarterfinal. Well, I think he's got an angle here on the, the yellow sort of on the black spot, just below the black spot to kick into his awkward one. 
This yellow right here. Still a problem remains the yellow bottom of the table. And that might not be the worst thing that could have happened. Don't know whether he tried to cover the pocket there or pot that yellow, but either way, he's gained a measure of control. Yeah, but Terry Hunt's still in the driving seat with those two reds there. <coughs> it's also left Neil Blake snooking on the ball he'd like to release into the open. So Terry's sort of one step ahead of the game at the moment. So <coughs> That was a bit ambitious there from Neil. He tried to cut the yellow up to the top of the table and also kick his bow one out. And if he has left a plant on here, he can count himself very unlucky. He was a long ways out from what he intended, certainly in the pot end of the yellow. Where's the cue ball? Oh, well, that could be disastrous. And Terry Hunt knows it. He's had control of this one from the outset. And thanks to that careless miscue, he's just turned it right over to Neil Blake. Things have just been too easy for Terry. I think it's just lapses of concentration. You know, his, his opponent's been very nervous at the outset. Come to the table, missing easy balls. Terry thinks, I'm going to win this match. And he's just relaxed and he's, he's gone to sleep, really. Great chance here, though, for Neil. Just going to use his two shots. Kick the awkward yellow out, set it up. And you see him just kick the yellow out. Second visit. Little, uh, he's kicked out a little further than he'd like to. But he's still a good chance. It's all about position here, Tony. If he gets on to the last yellow, and that looks perfect. <laughs> Well, if you're going to get through matches like this, you've got to make your opponent pay. And from the mistake that Terry Hunt made, Neil Blake knows he has to slot this frame on his side of the scoreboard. Down goes the eight, and with it, the second frame goes his side of the scoreboard. As I said, 4-2 now to Terry Hunt. Well, he's still looking straight at the floor. To me, that looks like a man that's still trying to focus himself to the task at hand. Finally, Fred Barnes, but the color potted off the break. And for the first time, we see the break off successfully completed. Yeah, Red down, name. bottom left. So it's an open table for Terry Hunt. Well, I think Terry probably didn't like losing that last frame because he knew he was very, very careless there. Yellow ball's in play. I, th I think I saw a little bit more venom in his break shot. It's probably just woken him back up again. Just nudging out the yellow. Looks as though it's available to the same pocket for future use. 
He's having a look to see if it's available to the center, but that would be at a very acute angle. And it looks like it's on. Well, in actuality, bottom left, not on. So if he doesn't take it to the left center, at some stage, the only pocket it'll be available to will be bottom right. Here we go. This is the shot of this frame. And that was played with a very sure back arm. Very steady cue in that. Lovely stroke of the ball there. Right into the center of the pocket. Great shot from Terry Hunt. As you see, Terry's looking to pop the ball into the middle now. But he wants to get on the yellow up at the top of the table that's next to the black. Because he doesn't want to leave that to the last ball and try and get on the black because it would be pretty awkward. So I think you'll see him just pull the white back a little bit here. And he's absolutely perfect. Still got to go on this last yellow though. He's got to give himself the right angle to get back onto the black ball. Looks fairly straight on this. So he may have to just leave the white very close to the area where the yellow is. And now it's going to be a fine clip on the eight. This is missable. And all the pressure of winning or losing the frame on this pot. Great shot from Terry Hunt. The alarm went off and he's answered the bell. He's taken this frame and now leads Neil Blake by five frames to two. Very important to keep that cushion. When you're a heavy favorite, you don't want to give an underdog a chance at all. And another look at the eight. A great shot under a lot of pressure. And certainly he must be feeling a lot better after having dropped the preceding frame in a fashion where he really gift wrapped it and handed it over to Neil Blake to come to the table and complete a clearance like that has Eight to put frame, him in good stead. Neil Blake to break training. Five frame to do. Well Neil Blake saw Terry Hunt complete a successful break off in frame number seven, can he do it and repay the favor in frame eight? See how far his cue bent now on the break. Really tried to smash the balls, but his cue is bent on the cloth. Unbelievable. Does that too often? He'll be buying a cue probably three times a year. Red. Red balls nomination. See, just bend there on the cloth. I mean. It's a better break than, uh, than Terry's, but he's still struggling. Well, potting the yellow meant it was an open table. And so he slotted the red into the corner. And I wonder if he's finished on the red in the center of the table, just near the cluster of yellows. If he has, what a great opportunity this is. Well, that's a tremendous break. But it's down to him to put it to use. Whichever way he's going now, he's taking on a long pot, Jim. This will be a test of his nerves at this stage in the match. He's 5-2 behind. He can't afford to make any mistakes now. Oh, two minutes. Well, the red went down, but unfortunately the white did as well into the center pocket just have a look at the cue ball and that is unlucky the pot would have done his confidence the world of good and now it's two visits to terry hunt well i have to disagree with there jim i don't see that as unlucky i think that's careless at the end of the day you know he's a professional pool player and you should not be going on from there 
All he had to do was stun the cue ball over and he was in a great position. Terrible mistake. That's not exactly what Terry Hunt wanted either. He's still got the two visits, remember. But he's just nudged the red in front of the black to make it a little bit trickier. Nice angle on the last yellow to be able to bring the cue ball up to the eight and into the opposite corner pocket. Well, he's certainly going to be using his second visit. So here we go, the eight for the victory, and with it, a 6-2 lead. Down it goes, 6-2 confirmed, Terry Hunt doing nothing to Goliath's favoritism here in front of Neil Blake by four frames. And the in-off proving the end of Neil Blake's run in that frame. Well, Terry Hunt appearing to run away with it, but it could have been so different. If we remember back in the fifth frame, that missed black, that was very significant, Rob, wasn't it? Yeah, sure. It's been a pretty one-sided affair, and to be fair to Neil, he had a, he had a really good chance to get in the match in the fifth frame. Missed a very easy black to go 3-2, which I'm sure would have given him a lot more confidence, and he might have gone on to put a bit more pressure on Terry, but it just really seems to be slipping away. What chance does Neil have now of realistically um, at putting the moment, back? At the moment, he needs to put that error out of his mind. We all go through phases in these matches where you miss really important balls to win a big match or to get in a match and you just really need to play out of mind is gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Just concentrate on the rest of the match and fingers crossed, give himself a bit of do himself a bit of justice. Well thanks Rob. Well the players are ready to continue, so let's go back over to our commentary team of Jim White and Tony Holgate. Thanks, Estelle, but we all know what living in the past can get you. And right now, Neil Blake has to live for the present. He's 6-2 behind. He's got to try and put that score line right. And Terry Hunt, the man at the table, breaking off in frame nine. Half a chance here for Neil Blake. There you see another loose break from Terry Hunt. If you just watch him, he doesn't put his body into the break at all. Doesn't get in, generate the power that some of the players like Mick Hill, Darren Appleton, they really smash the breaks. Half a chance here for Neil. He's got the added insurance of the ball over the right hand bottom corner pocket. It almost looks here, Tony, that should he elect it, he could pot that yellow into the left center and come off two cushions and try and disturb that cluster of yellows. Just off two cushions and into the yellows. <clears throat> A little thicker contact here would have been certainly ideal as far as Neil Blake's concerned, but he's still on a yellow. You always clip one of them out, Jim, and it does give him the opportunity to maybe use that ball to kick the other one out. I think he tried to play onto that to leave an angle there, and he, he's just overdone it. Don't think you'll see him go for the frame, frame winning pots now. Yes, I agree. Just overdrew that, tried to leave the angle to do what you said, what you said, Tony. But it's still, I think, in his mind to try and pot this, take the cue ball over the cushion. And leave an angle to try and once again disturb that awkward yellow between the two reds. Well, it seems to me like Neil Blake's come out, decided to take the ball by the horns and really go for it. And that was bad control. And now by taking that ball up from over the corner pocket, if he should miss now after 
After taking that ball away, he's leaving Terry Hunt with a great chance to win this frame. I wonder if he's having a look at the in-off here. The yellow nearest the cue ball, off the red, into the bottom right, if it in fact goes. He's had a good look at it. If he hits it real hard, that's what he's going to be trying. Well, that really could have worked out a lot worse. So many times he's departed the table with nothing positive to build on. You know, I feel that when he didn't get the angle on the ball into the center pocket, he should have left his ball over the pocket at the bottom of the table and really just tried to contain Terry for a few more shots. There's a bit of a sloppy one there from Mr. Hunt, and you see him banging his shoulder with his cue. He's not very pleased himself about that shot. Just a loose one. And you see he's looking at his tip. I dare say Terry will be back at the table again there in this frame. Well, I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to get the yellow past the red. But he's absolutely miles away. And he's just made the situation much worse for himself. Terry, now he's got time on his side. In complete control of this frame. As you suggested, Tony, he's in no rush, with no need to be. But he's given half a chance here. Well, it was a tremendous pot, and he did get the yellow out, but he's been a bit unfortunate there, Neil. Cuts the yellow into the center pocket, releases the bad yellow off the cushion. And he's just a little unfortunate there, they didn't land on it. Gonna come up with something big here, though. Well, all the reds seem to be just in the wrong position there for Neil Blake. He can't even go off a couple of cushions and send it into the top of the table. Really is absolutely no shot here for Neil Blake. That could be the turning point. What a tremendous yellow. Two cushions and straight into the center pocket. And he converts it to victory. He needs this eight. Yes. What a tremendous shot from Neil Blake. Desperate measures. And what a response. New break to break. Starting 6 straight to 23. It's frame number 10 now at 6-3. Neil Blake breaks off. He's got his foot in the door. Can he put his shoulder to it? <laughs> Another look at his form, and he read straight into the center pocket. Could have been kinder, though, where the white is finished. A couple awkwardly placed reds jammed up against yellows. But it was always going to be reds in play, just given the fact that he had an easy starter. No easy yellow. Two difficult reds in the center of the table. And there they are.
when they always just seems to be plotting himself into trouble. He's going to try and take this red ball off the yellow and into the centre pocket. Tough shot, and he's also going to try and screw the cue ball into this red on the table and release it. We probably hit it as well as he could. The shot must not have been on. Neil wants to play. It hasn't been totally disastrous for Neil. He's not left anything real easy for Terry Hunt. Still, yellow's not ideally situated on the table either. I think Terry understands here that he doesn't want to let Neil Blake feel like he can win this match. There is an air of danger about some of the shots that Neil Blake has pulled out of his hat. And Terry knows he's got to be careful. He's got to be very measured in how he approaches this one. The thing is, though, Jim, you can't keep pulling shots out like Neil just did. If you're going to rely on them to win, win matches, you've got no chance. He's got to start putting some, together some consistency and actually stamping his authority on the match. Containing shot that one. Third second. Still a chance to open the awkward red. <coughs> well, it doesn't look like he's left anything easy. Possible fine clip on the yellow to the left center. <laughs> Missed by some ways, and once again, a sign that Terry Hunt, obviously feeling a little bit of the pressure from that clearance in the preceding frame from Neil Blake. I think Terry was trying to play his safety there, Jim. I don't think he could possibly miss a pot by that much. He was trying to pull the white behind the yellows there, not leaving seeing a red. As it's worked out, just let Neil get to the table, but that's a poor shot from Neil. And the only red ball he can see, if he can see it, is the one that's protecting that awkward yellow of Terry's. Yes. Not hit with nearly enough pace to get back for the intended red. Well, that oh, is unlucky. Two visits. <coughs> two visits to Terry Hunt. And two in-offs have cost Neil Blake dearly. And this is certainly one that he'll remember. This is pretty straightforward finish for Terry Hunt. So eases into the centre pocket, carrying the two visits under no real pressure. He's 6 3 up. And this is the sort of chance you want to go 7 3. Just takes the edge off that last frame. Momentum back with Terry Hunt. difficult of the yellows, the one nearest the red. On for Terry right now. Well, he's still got a second visit in hand, remember. 
And after a loose positional shot there, he might well use it at some stage. Nothing really has got to take the yellow at the bottom of the table now. And come back up for the yellow in the middle. I think this is the wrong shot. And there you are. That's not an ideal position. Can't understand why Terry didn't take the yellow at the bottom. Natural reaction was the cue ball to come back for the one in the centre. There you see tell you what, if he hit it any harder, he was in off in the corner pocket as well, Jim. Well, he's got to just try and lay it into an area to leave it potable. And don't forget, Jim, he must hit a cushion after contact. There you see, that's a great shot from Terry Hunt. Visit. Very similar shot to the one that we saw Neil Blake miss in frame five, but not so the case for Terry Hunt, and look at him gearing himself up, pushing himself towards that finish line. He now leads 7-3 over Neil Blake. Well, it was a big frame, this one, after the great one from Neil Blake, and so unlucky for that cue ball to weave a path through to the center pocket here. It's almost like as we replayed it, Neil Blake is remembering it too. The last block, there was never any doubt, right into the heart of the corner pocket for Terry Hunt. Reestablishes the four frame cushion. Even thing friend, earlier as well as Terry Hunt showing a bit of emotion, Jim. Get himself fired up. It's not often you see that from Terry. Usually pretty calm. Up and table. Well, nothing down. <laughs> the colors flying everywhere but into a pocket. And Neil's choice here of reds or yellows. Well, he missed that by a fair Open way, table. but I couldn't understand why he was taking reds, to be honest. <coughs> Well, you and I were looking at each other, shaking our heads. I was in agreement. Wouldn't surprise me to see Terry Hunt take yellows from this position. Well, for me, yellows are the far better suit. But no, Terry. Terry's also going for the reds. Red well, obviously, he's going to play this red ball now off the yellow and into the centre pocket. But there's a danger here. You know, the yellow shooting up the table. He could go in front of the black. Obviously, it could also kick out the black, but there's also that element of danger. That was an incredible shot from Terry Hunt. I really thought he was going to play this, the red off the yellow. Look at this. Look at the side on the cue ball, Jim. Round the back of the black, split the reds apart. Superb shot. Well, that's understanding the cue ball. Actually made the cue ball dance as it went round the black. Unbelievable shot. Set the second. Great red, too. Refuse the easier one to the left center. This is a much more difficult red and safely negotiated. Terry going for the, the big pot down the rail. This is a tough one. 
I'll tell you yellow what, he was lucky that he missed it by a long way because it just clipped off the yellow and it's gone over the pocket. Overcut this by some ways. Just rubs off the yellow and sits over the pocket. A little bit fortunate there, Terry. Well, for me, I think, Neil, what he's got to do now is maybe put another yellow and then send the yellow that's over the left-hand centre pocket up over where the black is. Blocks off the black ball, gives him a chance to win the frame. Well, I think he's looking at the clearance here. He's going to try and play this yellow cushion first to try and open the pocket. Difficult shot, this one. Well, that's as good as it gets. Has he been unlucky? Well, he really has not had luck on his side in this match. He's been cursed on a couple occasions, and this one, again, coming to the aid of Terry Hunt. That red could have finished anywhere but there. Yeah, that's right, Jim. That was dreadful bad luck. As you can see, he can, he can maybe just get through that gap, but he's got to bend the cue ball around the red to actually pot the yellow. Have to feel for Neil, though. Well, that was a strange shot, though. I could see what he was trying to do. He just wanted to bump the yellow out, leave Terry with a tough shot, but he's made the yellow awkward as well. It's not played a clever shot. That's a fantastic shot from Terry Hunt. Well, that shot for me is a frame winner. He's now covered the ball, that covered the pocket where the black is. Great shot from Terry Hunt. I'm quite surprised it didn't drop, which would have probably not have been as useful as having it stay over the pocket. That one as well, everything but down. Well, you can see, trying to nudge the yellow away from the black. I think he might have nudged it into the open enough where it could be available. He's just going to slide the red into the centre pocket. He leaves a little angle on the, on the last red into the top right. So it all depends here now on how he can develop the black. Leave himself a shot at it. Well, it was in fact available. And this has been a good performance. Down goes the eight, and Terry Hunt finds himself just one frame away from a place in the semifinals. Ready, eight frame to three. Well, in our first semifinal, our first quarterfinal, sorry, we saw Mick Hill stage a tremendous comeback, falling just short. I wonder if Neil Blake. Can draw heart from what Mick Hill showed. A look at his break, successfully completed. But he gets his power into it, his shoulder. Red doesn't follow break. through as much as I'd like to see.
As you can see, Neil Blake is taking the reds, but he's got one hard ball. It's on the right-hand side of the table. And there you see it, the ball that's circled there, the red. He's going to have to get that out at some stage if he's going to win this frame. wonder what's going through his mind now. He must be thinking, one mistake, and I'm out of the World Championships. I just feel that Neil will probably be disappointed in his performance. He's not performed as well as he can. Well, and in fairness to him, he's had a little bit of bad running, certainly at very inopportune moments. There you see again, he's, he's been slightly unfortunate. Very, very thin cut. Just look how fine he hit that ball. Kisses the red at the top of the table as well, but just look how close the red sat to the cue ball. Well, I don't think that cuts, Jim. If it does, it this is completely taking the paint off the ball. It's that thin. Well, well, that, that might have worked out absolutely perfect, Tony. More good luck than good management, that one. Cue ball missing the red and just, but I've got a feeling that this red may be on from where the white's finished. Well, I think you could play a double here into the uh, other corner. And he's got it. What a great shot from Neil Blake. Saved himself. He's still in the championship. He's pulled some rabbits out of hats, and Neil Blake does not want to throw the towel in just yet. He still trails eight frames to four with a mountain to climb, but it's there waiting. Tremendous double. It was all or nothing right there. He's got a little smirk on his face now, Jim. I think he enjoyed that shot. Well, one thing about it, the frames that he's won, he's won with a little bit of flair. Not the conventional way. No, he's been leaving himself, his, himself in positions where he's right. had to pull out these big shots, but boy, has he got a couple of screamers in. Terry Hunt, as we've seen very often Open thing. in this quarterfinal, nothing in off the break. He finds himself eight frames to four in front, and his break has deserted him. Probably can hardly believe his good fortune. I think he's, what he's going to attempt here, Jim, is to plant, to put the yellow into the middle and then break away these two balls that are stuck together at the bottom of the table. What a great shot he's got it. You know but once again, he's been unfortunate where he's landed, Jim. No easy shot next. Yes, another look at it. Negotiated the plant. Thicker contact on that yellow would have been useful. As you can see, the yellow ball does pass into the corner pocket. And that's a great shot. Could have done with hitting it a bit firmer, though. He's trying to get to the top of the table. Likes to make life after himself, doesn't he? Lovely pot, though. He certainly likes living on the edge. We've seen evidence of that in this match. Got a flair for the dramatic. Red balls to play. Why well, I think that's done him more favours than if he'd have potted it, Jim. It was a very tough finish if he'd have sunk that one. You see Yellow come down, just catches the jaw and hanging over the pocket. 
No easy shot for Terry Hunt. He's got a lot to do to win this frame. If Neil can get this frame, make it 8-5. Who knows? Now you see Terry Hunt's now blocked that top right-hand corner. That's the only pocket really where the yellow's available at the top of the table. Absolutely perfect weight. Ideally, if Neil could just get past in between the black and the red, he could come off the top rail and kick his bad yellow down the table. This would open a whole frame up for Neil Blake. Well, I thought he could have played that a bit firmer. Well, it's matured the situation, but only slightly. The yellow is available again now, albeit only to one pocket. But he's giving Terry Hunt opportunities to try and rest the momentum, boy. Yeah, I think Terry will be coming down the bottom of the table now trying to cover. No. Thought I saw Terry there come down the bottom. Maybe Mr. Hunt's looking for a finish. He's looking at the cut into the corner pocket and maybe kicking a ball that's on the left-hand rail out into the open. Almost looks like it might be a little too thin, Tony. Otherwise, I think he'd have taken it on. He's got the cushion at eight frames to four in front and just overdid that. You won't see him take that red over the top right too soon because if he does, he'll clear the pocket for Neil Blake's yellow. And that he will guard against. There's an outside chance here for Neil Blake. Far from easy, but he's completed much more difficult. If it does go into a real tactical battle, Jim, it doesn't favour Neil Blake. There you see, he tried to cover the pocket. Yellow's dropped in, and now he's in trouble. Only got one yellow he can go for. And really, he's going to have to go for this now. There's no way, there's no point in him playing the safety. If he plays the safety, I think Terry will just clear up. He's unlucky there, he's trying to pot that and then he's going to double the yellow down the table. He went to go in the pocket and actually came back out again. Very unlucky from Neil Blake. Yes, yeah, so it was just the pace that kept it out. <laughs> Terry Hunt in with a real opportunity now. And there's no obstacles to see Terry Hunt through to the semi-finals. It's all about getting on that red at the bottom of the table. That's the key to winning the match. 
That's not picture perfect. Just the wrong side of that red in the middle of the table. And so a little bit more work to do than he would have liked. That's the only area that he can get the cue ball. Just drawing it back just top of where his hand is. He has to make sure that he clears the black to leave that one red on. Not easy to hold the cue ball here though, Jim. He'd like this a little bit thicker, this pot. It's a good pot, he's got a great chance. See Neil Blake there tapping his leg, applauding Terry Hunt's shot. Shows what a good sport he is. No doubt, this eight. Still required for the victory. Down goes the eight, and Terry Hunt has dismissed the Welsh international, Neil Blake, almost apologetically. But a good performance, a rock-solid performance from the world number seven. He's beat Neil Blake nine frames to four.